is the world finally paying attention to Artsakh? What the heck is going on between Turkey and Azerbaijan regarding Nagorno-Karabakh? And there's, there's hints that the President of the United States is actually going to do something that no other president has done before. And I think you might know what I'm talking about. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Sovereign Arts Talk. I'm Michael Gavlik, a Hollywood producer um, who has started this channel to focus in on Armenia because I think important things are going on there. Well, especially related to what I'm doing with my life. I have uh, a project that I'm working on, the Sogum and Tellurian story, and uh, that's a long-term process. But in the meantime, I'm trying to post daily here the daily news plus at the end of this uh I, at the end of each episode at least for the time being i'm talking about what was going on in the life of sogum and Tellurian exactly 100 years ago today the reason i'm doing that is because as of march 15th this past march 15th that was the 100 year anniversary of sogum and Tellurian becoming famous he put a bullet in the head of talat pasha the adolf hitler of world war one Without that's the shorthand way of explaining what exactly Sogomon did. As if he were a Jewish kid escaping the Holocaust and assassinating Hitler, that's exactly what he did, except 25 years earlier during the Armenian Genocide, or after the Armenian Genocide. All right, uh, before I move on to some news, uh, please subscribe, pass this video or this channel along to some of your friends, your Armenian friends, your Christian friends, and I, I emphasize Christian. I mean, Armenians, this is the natural, like this subject matter should be interesting to them, whether they're in, whether they're, whether they're in Armenia or the diaspora around the world. Uh, so I'm catering to them. This is their story, um, but it's also the Christian story because Armenia was the first Christian nation. So I'm going to try and reemphasize that. Pass this along to Christians because it was a shock to me that I had never learned about Armenia uh, being the first Christian nation. And the story of that is fascinating as well. Um, and we, I could go into that at some point. I have another channel where I talk about those things. Uh, history and interview historians. All right, I, I'm getting sidetracked here. Subscribe to this channel, click the like button, and uh, share. All right, let's get into a little bit of this news. What do I want to start with? All right, all right. yesterday I talked about some things I had questions about, and and this is actually one of those things that I meant to talk about yesterday. But so this is a super short, and it does not tell me anything. So I'm just going to get through this real quick. And if you have any idea what this is about. Put in the comment section, and I will uh, read up on it. Aliyev, the president of Azerbaijan, who declared war on Artsakh uh, in September of 2020. Let me fix my video. I hate it when that happens in the middle of recording. Uh, occasionally it freezes on me. Don't know what that's about. Technical issues. All right, we're back. Uh, so Aliyev bestows order upon Erdogan's son, uh, Erdogan's son-in-law. Says the president of Azerbaijan and the son of the president of Turkey. Uh, so as I've stated on this channel, Turkey and Azerbaijan really are one nation with two states. They are united in their goal of genocide against Armenia. There was a genocide against Armenians really started more than 100 years ago, 100, maybe 200 years ago. It flared up in the Hamidian massacres, the bloody sultan of in 1896, 1894 to 396, some 200,000 Armenians were massacred in the Ottoman Empire. And then uh, about two decades later, less than two decades, yeah, two decades later, uh, that number was dwarfed during World War One, of up, upwards of 1.5 million Armenians were massacred under the cover of war, under the propaganda of it was just a civil war. No, it was a massacre. It was a, butch a, a butchery of women and children. It was a genocide. Um, so these two nations, I mean, the goal at that time was the Ottomans wanted to eliminate Armenia and extend their territory all the way to the Caspian Sea, which is territory that is today Azerbaijan. That's why I say they have been united in purpose from that time, from a long time ago, wanting to eliminate everybody who's not a Turk. 
right? That was the goal. Eliminate all non-Turks because similar to Hitler in World War II, where Hitler believed in the superiority of the Aryan ethnic lineage, right? The, the master race, that was the, that was the idea that the, the, the white race, the Aryan race or the Hitler's, uh, pick a, pick a group, pick an ethnic population. That's the superior race and they will take over the world. Well, that was, he was echoing was what had happened in World War One under Talat Pasha, that the Turkish ethnicity was considered the master race and that they wanted to unite all Turkish ethnic populations. Well, that continues to today. Erdogan and Aliyev, uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey, are uh, both Turkish nations. So let me just read this. It's one paragraph. The president of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, today bestowed the Karabakh order upon Selçuk Bar Baraktar, who is Recep Erdogan's son-in-law and the technical director of Baikar Makin. Baikar, who is on a visit to Azerbaijan, tweeted this and posted a photo of him and Aliyev. He's planning to host a festival of aerial technologies in Baku. I, I don't know. I have no idea what the Karabakh order is. Doesn't sound good. It just looks like Bad things are on the horizon. I mean, they're 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 tipping their hat. The Karabakh order, as if Nagorno Karabakh is still on their minds. They're wanting to. All right, let me move on. So this is this I found. Uh, the international community, and, I, and if you've been watching this channel for a while, I've pointed out there may be some that I haven't mentioned, but I have mentioned uh, uh, Uruguay. I think it was that. Uh, that declared that Nagorno-Karabakh should be a sovereign nation and France, a bunch of the ministers of France, the majority of the governors, I think, of France have voted that Nagorno-Karabakh should be recognized as a sovereign state. I mean, that's part of the goal of this channel, right? Right here, it's, it's called Sovereign Artsakh, after all. And now uh, other countries have been paying attention. This the Slovakia's National Council adopts resolution on Nagorno-Karabakh. Read this real quick. Uh, first of all, where the heck is Slovakia? There it is, right above Hungary, right below Poland, formerly known as Czechoslovakia, and then was split up. Right? There's Austria, Germany, Slovakia. All right. During the 25th plenary session on April 1st of the National Council of Slovakia has adopted a re resolution on Nagorno-Karabakh. The resolution has has been submitted by Chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Marianne Carey. It was approved with 120 votes in favor. The resolution strongly condemns the killings of civilian population, the destruction of civilian infrastructure, cultural and religious sites and monuments, expresses concern over the military involvement of third countries during the conflict. Ooh, third countries as in Turkey and Syrians. Uh, third countries during the conflict and their destabilizing role emphasizes that the process of achieving lasting peace and determining the future legal status of Nagorno-Karabakh should be implemented under the auspices of the OSCE Minsk group co-chairs. The resolution also expresses deep concern that the prisoners of war and other detained persons, including civilians, have not been released in accordance with the international humanitarian law, in particular the Third Geneva Convention. The resolution calls on the government of Slovakia, the European Union, and international organizations to ensure the proper investigation of war crimes, including all accusations about the use of cluster munitions, and all prisoners of war and civilians are released immediately and that international humanitarian organizations enter into Nagorno-Karabakh without restrictions. Boom! Slovakia! Alright, so why, I mean, it strikes me personally because my last name is Gavlak, and when I was born I was told I was Czechoslovakian, uh, but, uh, once this country split in two, I asked, well, am I Czech or am I Slovak? And I was informed that Gavlak is a Slovak name. So this is my people. This is my country doing the right thing. I, I don't have, well, I don't know anybody in Slovakia, but my ethnic heritage. I mean, my uncle thinks we're Polish and my, and there's evidence that my great grandmother may have been Hungarian. But look, this territory these borders have moved many, many times over the centuries, but so, but I've always identified as Slovakian. So I'm happy with that. Um, 
Uh, also, let me finish with this. This is a rumor that we've... <laughs> <laughs> Let's just read it. U.S. political scientist White House sources told me Biden administration will recognize Armenian genocide. Okay, I'm going to take this with a grain of salt because this kind of article has come out with every administration. The, the presidents before the election say we're going to recognize the Armenian genocide and then it never happens. And I, I mean, those there are those who have said it's a genocide, but it has to be official, you know, in, in the official documentation in the U.S. government, you know, the paperwork, right? It has to be recognized officially. There's plenty of people arguing, oh, it's already been recognized. Army, Ronald Reagan recognized that way back in the 80s. If it's not officially designated, you know, there's whatever the terminology is in the government, it has to be uh, like a, an executive order has to be signed or something that will affect in our, our relationship with Turkey, right? To recognize the Armenian genocide is a, a foreign affairs stance that could threaten or certainly threaten our relationship with Turkey. But it's still the right thing to do. Let me just read real quick. It's just these two paragraphs. White House sources told me the Biden administration will recognize Armenian genocide, the first U.S. president to recognize genocide by Ottoman Empire during World War I. This was announced on Twitter by American political scientist and well-known international commentator Ian Bremmer. So this guy, Ian Bremmer, is sticking his neck out. He says, it's going to happen. Turkey's president, Erdogan, is about to face another diplomatic challenge, which is from the United States, as I've heard from the White House, that President Biden is going to recognize the 1915 killings of the Armenians under the Ottomans' rule as a genocide, Bremer added in a video posted at Gazero, Gazero Media. All right. This would be good if it happens. I'm rooting for it. Uh, I. <laughs> this is the month. It's April. It's April. This would be... Uh, April 24th, obviously, is the day that the uh, genocide began with the rounding up of the Armenian intellects in Istanbul being put on trains and sent to their deaths. All right. Uh, let me just talk Sogman Talarian here a little bit. I, I like using this picture now for this guy. So this is his 100 and today is Sogman Talarian's 125th birthday. 100 years ago, he was sitting in jail, in jail for the assassination of the Adolf Hitler, of the Hitler of World War I, Talat Pasha, the man responsible or, or designated as the architect of the Armenian Genocide. The first megadeath, by the way, a megadeath in the dictionary means one million deaths. And so up to that point, there had not been any recorded uh, deaths of uh, uh, numbering in the millions in in war or in any in, in any for any reason right one million deaths so it's the first mega death in recorded history it was the uh, Armenian genocide oh, you could also call it the Christian genocide because there were upwards of two million people killed some were Greek Christians or Greeks, Assyrians, any, any ethnic Christians were massacred. Armenians happen to be the largest population. All right. A lot of you already know this, but if you didn't know that, then now you do. So this picture was taken. The family, Sogomo's family tells me that this was taken in Berlin. And I think it may have been taken while he was in jail. While he was in jail waiting, waiting trial. His trial was on June 2nd and 3rd of 1921. So he was waiting, waiting the death sentence, actually, because he's, he, he assassinated a world leader. Uh, he was on, he was charged with the death penalty. And today, April 2nd, was his 25th birthday. Now, let me clarify some things. In the in his testimony in the trial. Now, I don't know if he had met with his lawyers yet. So it was like his 18th night in jail would be April 2nd. So it was March 15th. So, oh, maybe his, his 18th night in jail, 17th, 18th night in jail. I He had been interviewed by plenty of police officers by this time. And one of his co-conspirators, no, uh, one of his friends, 
not one of the conspirators, but one of his friends had been had come in to translate. Oh, one of actually one of his co-conspirators had come in to translate in one of the interviews. And he said, he was like, why are you here? They can't find out that this was a conspiracy. They, it has to just be I was a I was a lone gunman. But I don't know that he had met with his attorneys yet. I do know that they wanted it to be a quick trial and they actually had hoped that the trial would happen in April, but it was postponed. But in the testimony, when the trial did happen, they changed his age. So uh, he would have been, he would have turned 24 if uh, what they lied about was true, right? They lied about the day, year he was born. They said, they said he was born in 19 in uh, 1897 but he was actually born in 1896 which makes him 25 years old today in 1921 or 125 years old 100 years ago the reason they lied about his age was that if he was born in the year he was born in 1896 then he would have been 18 years old during the genocide if he was 18 years old during the genocide, he would have been drafted into the Ottoman military. He would have been conscripted. He would have been a soldier in the Ottoman army. And because when you turn 18, you're automatically drafted. And there were innumerable, there were numerous young Armenian men who were massacred. They were in the mil- their own government. They were Ottoman citizens, Armenian Ottomans, Armenian Turks, you could say, signed up for the military and their guns were taken away from them. They were put in labor camps, and then they were butchered during the genocide. But he had escaped the Ottoman Empire, escaped. He had moved uh, with his family to what's current modern-day Serbia or Belgrade to hopefully go to school. His plan was to go to university, and his father and two of his brothers and his uncle were uh, out of out of the Ottoman Empire working in a business, sending money back home. But... They lied about his age because they also lied that he witnessed the massacre of his family. So he would have had to be there to see it. So these are some. Of the, so they lied about his age in order for him to lie about witnessing the death of his family so it would be more sympathetic to the jury. Interesting. Right. Happy birthday, Sogomon. Happy birthday, Sogomon Tolerian. Share this video subscribe, click the like button and comment in the comment section.